Hello there, Cancer. Welcome to my channel. Victoria here, Radiant Moon Tarot. This is your July 2023 love reading. This is for all of you currently in a romantic partnership or if it comes up a temporary separation from your person. Uh, if you are single and looking for new love, please go and check out the singles readings that are already posted for you guys. So let's see what we've got for you guys in the month ahead. Just a little heads up here for you. Right around the middle of the month, right when... Um, uh, right when uh, the sun goes into Leo, so the start of Leo season on the 22nd, Venus goes into retrograde and this can bring about a lot of um, fiery energy, a lot of passionate energy, which you can really use to your advantage. But because we do have that retrograde coming in there, it could bring some drama to your uh to your world okay it could be family drama there could be something that crops up uh you know that's maybe getting rehashed a little bit if you're going on vacation it might just be a little bit um you know you might be some disagreements and things like that there and it's because we've got passion it's because we've got the fiery energy and it's not necessarily bad it's just that things can sometimes get out of hand but you can use this for your advantage too you can infuse more passion and fire into your love life into your romantic relationship as well and maybe even try some new things we do have bond coming in here for you a love bond grows stronger over time so some of you have been with your person a long time. Some of you are in a relatively new relationship. So whichever one, it's those bonds, right, that grow stronger, um, hopefully, over time. Now, some of you, you might looking at that going, I don't know, I don't feel the bond as much as I really want to. A bond between two people is not something that you can force into existence, right? So maybe there's something there that's just a little bit lacking in your relationship. And this may be that you're not spending enough time together. There might be a lot of distractions that are around the world, um, you know, or around your your life, right? Your world and your life, um, you know, uh, money issues or family issues and this kind of thing. So, you know, sometimes we need to really focus on spending that time with our person and really solidifying the bond um, between us, right? And that does require some communication. It also does require, you know, um, having that quality time. So maybe this is the month for you where you find a little bit of quiet space avoid any kind of uh, you know find some time where you can avoid um, any kind of um, distractions and just spend time with your person we have connection your connection is eternal and unbreakable. This is just beautiful energy that's coming out there um, in that. So uh, again, some of you are very, very strong, very tight-knit um, with your person and others of you, you are building that connection and you are building that bond. So it's a beautiful energy there. We also have love, love conquers all, okay? So some of you might be going through a rough patch or you may have some challenges that you've been working through, right? And when we have got all this beautiful energy that's coming out here so far, um, this shows that you can conquer pretty much anything if you work together, if you communicate, if you spend that quality time with each other, then you can overcome mountains, right? You can climb to the top of Mount Everest together and really sing from that mountaintop. So let's see what else we've got for you. We've got the Eight of Wands. Now, some of you actually might be going on vacation. The Eight of Wands right in the heart of your reading can represent um, moving forward, right? Um, things are happening fast. We've got a lot of things going on with the Eight of Wands. We've got a lot of obligations. We've got a lot of um, endeavors, right? Abundance of things on the go, right? So this is where we're really busy. This is where time management comes, uh, comes into play, right? And with this particular energy, this could be where... Oh, we're not feeling as 100% connected with our person as we really want to be. So there might be some things here that you're getting everything done. Things are exciting, um, you know, and um, things are heating up. But, you know, we do sometimes need to remember, again, to take that quiet space back. But the Eight of Wands can also represent some really good news and positive communication. It's wonderful. Things are happening at full speed um, in this energy. So this could be that you're just headed in the right direction with your person. For some of you, things are heating up. They're speeding up in your relationship, right? Things are taking off in the direction that you want. The Eight of Wands is quite often associated with manifestation, with that good news, setting 
setting those intentions and then seeing things happen. So it can be a great energy. But the Eight of Wands is also um, recognizing the potential in your relationship and making all the right moves, all the right steps forward. But it can be an energy of travel as well. So maybe some of you are planning a vacation. Maybe you have a vacation already booked and that's coming up in the month of July. Or maybe there is this intention that we need to get away. We need to get away from things. And you see in this card, right, we're on the water, we're in the mountains, and there's like not a soul around. So you might need to do that, okay? Because we do have the Nine of Wands, ouch. Oh, the Nine of Wands, we're tired. We've got so much stuff on the go, right? We've got kids, we've got family, we've got work, we've got um, all of this, all of this crazy stuff. So how do we get a little bit of relief Right. And again, we need to in that eight of wands. OK, you're getting everything done. But the nine of wands is where we're wounded. We're tired. We're, we're you know, we've um, haven't taken a break for a while. OK, but we keep on persevering. We keep on moving forward. So I feel like here in your relationship, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things that are going on. So a little quick getaway or even if you can't get away. Right. Can't always afford it. Okay, let's face it, we can't always afford it. We've got real world problems, right? And if you can't afford to get away, maybe you can go on like a little day trip or get away for a few hours in the afternoon with your significant other. Perhaps there's someone around you that can help you out a little bit and maybe take the kids if you've got them, right? But whatever it is, you might have an opportunity or you might need to make an effort to find an opportunity to um, make that quiet space for you and your person because you need a break you need a rest you need um, a little bit of a time out now the nine of wands can represent that your relationship itself has been going through some challenges okay you keep on pushing through you keep on persevering okay but there's things here that are kind of draining your energy with the eight of wands it is that focus on moving forward and focus on um you know communicating better and setting the intentions for a relationship, right? And hashing things out in a better way. With the Eight of Wands is good, okay? But the Nine of Wands, we take things one step too far, okay? So there might be things you need to talk about. There might be boundaries that you need to put in place somewhere in your world as well, okay? The Eight of Wands, are you doing all of the heavy lifting Eight and Nine of Wands in your relationship, okay? Or is your person taking on their fair share of responsibility, Okay, are you equally committed, right, in this? Or is one person making all the decisions and the other person just enjoying the ride and enjoying the benefits, right? So there's something here that may need to, um, might need to uh, be discussed, might need to be overcome, okay? But the Nine of Wands crossing you, this is a challenge. And so again, um, you know, it is a little bit of a challenging energy anyway with the Nine of Wands. So perhaps some of you, you are feeling like your relationship has the potential to move forward, but there's something here that you need to deal with, right? Because it's kind of tiring, exhausting. It's a little bit of a heavy energy. Let's pull out some more cards, see where else we go. We've got the High Priestess here as well. Now the High Priestess is a great energy, but it is quiet, Okay. Um, the high priestess is in your crowning position. So this is your goals, your thoughts, your possibilities, but your crowning position is all about your crown chakra too. And your maybe your intuition is telling you something. Your intuition is saying, Hey, hello, come on, you're tired, you're drained, we gotta be we gotta deal with something, we gotta move something along in a bit in a healthier direction okay and we need to resolve some things here right we need to find some space we need to find the quiet time the high priestess is a very intuitive energy also has a lot of wisdom maybe you are uh, looking to seek out some guidance because the high priestess can be you know the wise old crone so to speak and this can be somebody who is um, has a lot of words of wisdom. They've got a lot of information, right? They've been through things. They've been through the ups and downs in life, right? And this can be somebody who maybe you are wanting to talk to. You want to seek out some of their um, guidance, right? Because maybe they've been, maybe it's grandma and she's, you know, been married for, you know, 40, 50 years or something like that. And you're like, man, it can't have always been easy, easy and peasy for her, right? So maybe there's something there that someone there that you want to talk to. But I think ultimately here, your intuition is really pointing you in a certain direction. And it's showing you what you need to do, what you need to change, or what you need to overcome, what you need to talk about. So trust your intuition and follow it, okay? Because it is never wrong. 
but the high priestess is the keeper of secrets and mysteries and it is a very mute energy and so here you are maybe you're thinking about something and you're not talking about it okay there's something quiet um, going on and sometimes we don't tell our person all of our worries and our fears and everything like that but maybe you need to Okay, maybe you just need to get something off of your chest and this will help you to relieve things. Remember, the Eight of Wands that's here in the middle of your reading is an incredibly positive card, right? It is, yes, it's busy and it can be frantic and it can be a lot of things going on, but it can also represent moving positively in the positive direction, the right direction, right? The Nine of Wands, it's like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little bit challenged in this, right? You're not giving up. And it's important to know, right? The nine of wands, we're not giving up. We keep moving forward, okay? But we got to kind of get something off our chest or work something out. And your intuition tells you that, okay? It says, hey, you can't, you know, you can't deal with everything on your own. You got to speak up. You got to speak out loud. We've got the two of wands beneath you. And this is in your subconscious position. Your two of wands is where you've got an idea. You're making a plan. So maybe you are making some sort of plans for your future, setting some intentions for the future. But maybe there's some doubts or some confusion or just something here. Or maybe part of your plans for the future require you to um, do a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get it all done. Okay. So maybe some of you are with the two of um, wands. Uh, making some travel plans or maybe you're moving in the month ahead okay you might be moving to a new place of residence because eight of wands right can be travel but it can also just be movement okay um so you know it feels like here that there is things that are moving in the right direction for you but there is some that this energetic draining um element that's coming in here as well okay so if you are if you and your person are moving to a new house or something like that okay are they doing their fair share or does the brunt of the responsibility lie on you sometimes it happens that way and especially if our person is working or maybe they travel for work or maybe you do right one person ends up doing a little bit more of the heavy lifting than the other person does okay but the two of wands in your subconscious right this is like how you're feeling you're feeling like you maybe need to remove some sort of obstacle or you need to move in a certain direction, right? But it feels like here, like you're maybe, um, you know, seeing your path forward and you're not really seeing um, that it there's a lot of obstacles, right? And so it's like, because when we get the two of wands, the world is your oyster, there's a lot of potential, a lot of possibilities, and the path forward is clear, so there could be a temporary situation that you're dealing with right now because ultimately you feel you feel you can move forward with your person. So there might be just be something here that you just need to talk about, you need to resolve, you need to hash out, okay? Or it could be that you've been through a rough patch and you're about to have that breakthrough that you need in that energy, okay? But the two of wands, yeah, you can be making some travel plans there as well, right? We've got the Hierophant coming in here. Hierophant's a wonderful energy. This is Taurus energy reminding you to take things slow, Okay, reminding you to do things one day at a time. The Hierophant ultimately brings us some wisdom. Okay, the things that we learn, gaining deeper levels of understanding about things. Okay, so there is maybe something here, some sort of something that you're learning um, or maybe you are gaining a little bit of knowledge about something. Now, if you're in a newer relationship, yeah, you're learning about your person, right? You're going through... Um, a, you know, probably a transformative period in your relationship here, right? And, you know, again, there's um, maybe some things here with the nine of wands, something from a past relationship, especially if you've got children or anything like that, or if you need to put up some boundaries with an ex, hmm, right? Exes have a way of getting under our skin, don't they? Okay, so you could have something to do with children there and it could involve a past person. But the Hierophant also deals with our resources, okay? And there could be some money troubles, money struggles here. Um, maybe some of you are looking for a new job or maybe, you know, your person is going out and they're working really hard or you are and it just makes you feel kind of tired and down, okay? Um, and, you know, there are better times ahead, but we're all going through this collectively, okay? And we do have a lot of worries, right? So there might be just some external worries, not necessarily in your relationship, okay? But it's just like, you know, feeling the pressure right feeling that there but the Hierophant this is from your recent past so this can be just coming in from June this can be coming in from before maybe you're talking or you're thinking about 
marriage and a higher level of commitment with your person, okay? Because the Hierophant is a very positive energy. It's also a spiritual one, and it also does have to do with marriage or deepening or heightening levels of commitment with your person. There could be a little underlying element of fear for some of you, right? Like, especially if your relationship is moving forward really quickly um, in this, right? You might be feeling in the Nine of Wands like, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, hold on. I just got to put the brakes on for a little minute here, right? Yes, things are good. Yes, things are moving forward. We're forming strong bonds and connections, but man, I'm kind of, I'm kind of freaked out, right? So sometimes we can kind of like, you know, feel the need to just kind of slow things down just a little bit. And that might be what you're feeling there, um, if that's you. But the Hierophant can have to do with your belief systems. Yes, your commitment, um, but also traditions and values. All right. And, you know, if you're entering a higher level of commitment with somebody or if you are married already um, or if you're talking about the future or you've got some family that maybe puts their two cents in where you didn't ask for it. OK, because the nine of wands, you can have your defenses up. Right. So with the higher event coming in, it could be a person or it could just be a situation that is giving you a little bit of grief. Um, because where family traditions and values go when we're infusing people together, right? Multiple family, like blending families together. We're talking about marriage, all this kind of stuff. Sometimes there's certain things that we really do value and that we cherish and that we want to keep hold of, right? So it can be quite the effort to blend traditions and values together, right and of course everyone's got a freaking opinion right so you may, may you might have your guard up there with the nine of wands all right um because if you are making some wedding plans or things like that or if you are considering moving in together right you got that strong bond that's forming or that's already between you and again sometimes we've got something there that we want to work out right so you know it could be um the challenge of blending and fusing the old with the new right or maybe you're just like you know what we want to come up with our own traditions, our own values, right? It doesn't really matter what anyone else has to say. I do feel that maybe some of you are planning a wedding. Man, oh man, is that ever exhausting? It's great, right? It's great. Um, it's something to celebrate, right? The Eight of Wands, it's fabulous, okay? But, oh, man, right? That's challenging, right? Because maybe up here with the High Priestess, you got Grandma who has her, you know, who has her own opinion, right? You've got your, maybe your parents or something like that, or some family figures that, hey, you know, we're paying for some of this. So we get to, uh, you know, put our two cents in, right? And of course, everyone has opinion, right? So you could maybe really need to put up some very important boundaries, okay, in your, um, in your month ahead or probably even beyond that. We've got the nine of swords coming in. Wow, you got the two best nines, didn't you? So this is your near future. Nine of wands and nine of swords. Man, oh man, that is some heavy energy. The nine of swords is where we overthink, we overanalyze. We've got anxieties. We've got worries, okay? We're building something up in our head, essentially, with the nine of wands, okay? But it's keeping us stuck a little bit, okay? Um, because it has us going around in circles, swirly twirly gumdrops, and not in a good way, right? So, you know, when we do have that nine of swords, we're tossing and turning, we're staying awake at night, we're not sleeping well, okay? Maybe you're going, trying to go to bed a little bit earlier and it's just not working, or maybe you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning going, oh my God, I've got so much to do today, okay? Or I've got this weighing heavily on my mind. So there is some things that you're thinking about or things that you're worried about here with both of these two nines. Okay, um, and uh, you know, so the, but the thing is, with the nine of swords, we quite uh, quite often impose this heavy energy on ourselves. Okay, it's not that there's not anything to worry about. It's not that there's not issues or challenges that we're faced with along the day, right? Um, but it's just that sometimes we think the worst, and when we think the worst about something. Um, we tend to get all up in our head and then we kind of stop ourselves in our tracks, right? We're restricted. We're doubtful. We go down into that negative energy, which we don't want to do. But quite often the nine of swords, okay, when we look at something in the light of the day, right? Because this is a nighttime card, okay? And when we look at something in the light of the day and we address things um, directly, things quite often aren't as bad as what we had built them up in our mind to be, right? And then we actually end up getting a sense of relief because it's like, okay, that's out in the open, 
okay? Or, wow, I've dealt with that thing and that wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be, right? Or I had this conversation and, huh, that went well. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting, you know, the, uh, you know, the, the, the ceiling to crumble on, on me or, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So it could be something here that you're, you know, actually really quite, um, anxious about in that energy. I'm just going to throw these last four cards down and, um, oh, you know what? You do actually have one of the better nines coming out here at the bottom of the deck. You've got the nine of pentacles, success, um, feeling good, feeling like you've accomplished something, feeling like you've come out um, on the other side in a better way, right? That kind of thing. So and you got a lot of nines, okay? Um, three nines in your reading. There's there's something here. There is a something here that is being wrapped up. That you're getting um, you're getting things done. You've reached some sort of finish line, right? Nines are about completion, okay? And um, with the nine of pentacles, right? You're completing something in a really wonderful way. Okay. And it makes you feel good. Right. And it is quite often associated with money, the nine of pentacles, or, um, as we quite often do see in this, okay, we've got this bird, we're in control of this bird. Okay. And this represents our anxieties, right? Those little voices in our head. Okay. That give us anxiety and stress. And this is quelling our anxieties, squashing our fears. This is where we're feeling way better about everything. We're actually feeling like we're on top of the world. And actually underneath that, we've got the six of pentacles coming in. So maybe someone gives you a little bit of help or assistance in some way um, in the month, either in the month ahead, it can be a little bit of a surprise or this can be something that's spilling over. Okay, into like August, maybe even September it could be a little bit longer than that as well. All right, but let's see what this nine of swords is about. I'll grab a couple more cards for this nine of swords. Three of wands. Magician. Judgment card. What are you afraid of? <laughs> You've got another great, great, great nine. Nine of cups at the bottom of this deck. Okay, nine of cups. Your wishes and your goals being fulfilled. So focus on the positive. Focus on what you want to accomplish. Focus on where you want to get to, right? When we focus on the positive, more positive things will happen. When we focus on the negative, more negative things will happen. Okay, so we don't want that. All right, so we do have the three of wands here. Okay, remember, we've got the two of wands here. Okay, this is your feeling of clearing your path or making some plans, right? And so maybe there is a little bit of element of fear of moving forward with something because the three of wands is where we've got a plan, we know what we want to do, all right? Our path forward is clear and we're ready for action. We're ready to move forward, we're ready to take some initiative there, and we're just maybe waiting for the right moment, the right time. So maybe there's something here that you want to talk about with somebody and you're just waiting for the right time, right? Um, but you're worried about it. So sometimes we get in the three of wands energy and yeah, okay, we're waiting for the perfect moment, but we can procrastinate in this energy sometimes because really there is no such thing as a perfect moment. There is such thing as the wrong time, right? But for perfection, perfection doesn't exist, right? And if we sit there waiting for perfection, um, in everything we do, we'll likely never do anything. Okay. So all we can do is kind of you know, do something in what we feel is kind of the best time available at this moment. Okay. For some of you, maybe there is some worries about moving a relationship forward. We do have forward movement here, right? And so maybe there's just some worries or doubts or fears. Maybe if you are planning a wedding, you're getting married, someone might be getting cold feet, or maybe you're worried that someone is going to get cold feet. Okay. That can be a big worry because maybe someone has you know, kind of experience something like that previously, a broken engagement, that kind of thing, right? Um, so that can be a little bit challenging for you there. There's also travel, right? Like moving or travel. And again, we already said moving here in the Eight of Wands. So perhaps there is, um, and the Hierophant, right? I mean, marriage and commitment, building a home together, that kind of thing. Um, you know, even just moving in together, right? Whatever that is, progressing the relationship into a higher level um, that we had previously. So perhaps there are some worries about moving in with your person, if that's what you're doing, um, or moving to a new house or even moving to a new city or something like that, right? There can be that little bit of anxiety that does creep in there. Okay, and of course, planning a wedding does bring about all sorts of anxiety if that's what you're doing. Okay, but I do feel that there's, you know, with that nine of nine of swords, 
the nine of wands. Okay, you need a break, right? We've, we said it already in your reading. You need a break, okay? Um, and you might just have the opportunity to do that there, okay? But we do have the magician. Focus on what you want. Focus on what you want to attract into your life. Focus on what you want to resolve. The magician brings in a little bit of magic to the mix. Ma <laughs> magician can actually be the counterpart to the high priestess, <laughs> right? Uh, you got that coming in there. Okay. So, you know, perhaps, um, you know, perhaps there's uh, a little bit of a magical couple that can help you out somewhere along your way. All right. Um, maybe even your, uh, you know, grandma or your old wise aunt or something like that, um, or a mysterious person that you seek out and maybe pay for a reading or something. Maybe they can point you in the right direction and get you back on track in that energy. But with the magician, Ultimately, remember the magic lies within you. The power lies within you, okay? You have the power. What do you want to create? Where do you want to go? What direction do you want your relationship to head in? What are you trying to accomplish in your month ahead or in the next few months, right? As quite often does come in. You have all of, you have the ability to get the resources that you need. You have the ability to create the life that you want, to resolve whatever issues that happen to crop up that magic lies within you okay and sometimes we do have fears about a new beginning the magician can bring in some new energy right and sometimes we do have that fear of the new okay or the new way of living the new way of being okay or sometimes we have a fear of having an all-important conversation okay but remember the magic right? The magician energy. What are you attracting in? Where do you want your relationship to go? Do you want simply a vacation, a quick getaway because you're freaking tired? Okay. Um, you know, are you trying to plan a wedding without any interference from, you know, every single relative that pops out of the woodwork, right? Um, you know, do you want to do something in secret, right? High priestess, something secret. Okay. Whatever it is that you want, you can manifest that into your reality. Okay. Focus, Remember, you're resourceful, you're abundant, anything is possible, all right? Um, and just make some choices, make some decisions, talk about something, okay? Or if you have meddling people all around you, keep something quiet. We have the judgment card coming in here too. So this is actually a beautiful welcome release from all of your anxiety and your stress and your worries. So again, you might have someone that's helping you. It might come as a bit of a surprise. The judgment card is, you know, where we do um, see the light. We gain clarity on things. We see the, you know, we see the potential. We see the possibilities. We see the truth. When we get the judgment card, right, everything's out in the open. Nothing's hidden. Nothing's secret anymore. Okay. And we get this deep realization here, right? So there could be a little bit of a surprise. Um, there could be something that just gets revealed or that you do need to talk about that hasn't been addressed. Okay, and again, this scary conversation that maybe you're thinking is, oh my God, this is going to go sideways. Someone's going to be really mad. But then with all of this energy here, huh, that actually worked out quite well, right? So, you know, it's all it's all in sometimes our timing of things. Of course, timing's never going to be 100% perfect. But if someone's having a really bad day and they're mad at the world, it's probably not the best time to, you know, talk about something, right? But we're just wait for it, some energies to settle down a little bit and that's a little bit better. But the judgment card brings in release, forgiveness, healing, second chances, okay? And this is where we're kind of making some very important decisions, the final judgment, if you will, to prepare us to move forward, okay? And leave anything behind, any extra baggage or feelings or doubts or worries, Right, and this is where we see our way forward with clarity, with a sense of purpose, and a lighter spring in our step. Okay, it's exactly what we need here. All right, so let's see you, your current attitude, and advice from spirit. So we've got the lover's card. Okay, so number one, the lover's card. Um, it's yes, true love. It's beautiful, harmonious connection, right? Connected at the heart and the soul. Spiritual connection, possibly with some of you. It is known as the soulmate card, but it is ruled by Gemini. And that is Mercury, our thoughts, our communication. So communication is the cornerstone of pretty much anything. Talk about what's worrying you. Talk about what's, you know, what's got you tangled up in knots, right? Um, you know, if there's some like injustice somewhere, right? Talk about it, right? So, um, you know, communication very much is the key. And that way we can collaborate. We can get together. We can be on the same page, right? And face the world together with our person. 
All right. The lover's card also sh also is that advice from spirit really saying that, you know, um, that there may be a little bit of imbalance, some, you know, disharmony somewhere um, in your world, right? So when we work together, find that balance, um, then things get a little bit easier. But I do feel here that you got this very strong bond with your person and um, there is love in the air right with that lover's card but there's also choices to make we've got very important choices with judgment card and we can have choices with the lover's card too so maybe you maybe there's a lot of decisions that are being made in your month ahead you and your person as far as a relationship goes may need to make some important decisions also okay because we do have the judgment card forgiveness second chances and bring in healing right um, you know, we're kind of worried about things. Maybe some of you are already married and you may have, have hit just a little bit of a bump in the road. Okay. You may possibly be separated already. Um, so with that judgment card, right, do you release, let go and move forward? Or do you welcome someone back and bring things back together into a healthier way? The choice is yours. So again, some matters of the heart, right? When matters, when it comes to matters of the heart, things are very complicated, right? Should be easy, but it's not. Okay. So there's a lot of um, dynamics that come in there. So choice, choice, choice. What is the wisest and what is the right choice for you? Because even though we do have the nine of pentacles at the bottom of the deck, we're resolving issues, we're feeling good, feeling successful, abundant, our anxieties are tamed. It can also be a card of independence. So for some of you, maybe this is a very important, crucial turning point for you in the month ahead, right? Is my relationship, where is my relationship going? You might be asking some of the big questions. Where is this going? What are the potentials here, right? Um, you know, is this, you know, are we headed in the right direction? Are the things that we need to fix and change and deal with now before they get out of hand and create issues down the road? right? You might be doing all of that kind of stuff. So certainly some decisions to make there. Wow, we've got the judgment card in your external environment. This is coming in again. Okay, so two judgment cards in your reading. This is very significant for you. Very, very important decisions to make. Now, of course, the judgment card, um, this can be about seeing the light, gaining that ultimate clarity. Maybe there is some sort of truth that is revealed. Okay, maybe you reveal something if you're keeping something quiet to yourself with the high priestess there. Okay, um, or maybe someone reveals something to you. Okay, so something that you, you know, again, may need to make a very crucial decision about. So the judgment card twice can just be a big clearing. Clearing and cleansing. Bringing in healing energy. Beautiful, right? But again, there might be something here that you do need to address. Something that has been unsaid, unspoken, or hidden, okay, may come in there for you. But again, 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 forgiveness, second chances, right? Seeing things very, very clearly, okay? Um, so very important energy. Whenever we get repeating messages um, in your reading, it is a call to pay attention. And when we get the judgment card, it's answering the call, okay? seeing that light. So, you know, for some of you here, you might just have a big burst of clarity or again, there's again, decisions. It's just the word decisions is just going like crazy through my head. So, um, very important turning point for you guys. All right. But with this being in your external environment, okay, there might be something that's causing you stress and grief that might not necessarily be within your relationship. It may be something going on, um, outside of it. Okay. Um, there's could be, I mean, you know, in the judgment card, right? We do have people coming out of coffins. Okay. And, you know, so maybe there is like some sort of, um, you know, maybe someone does like pass on or already has, and, um, you know, there could be like some sort of, you know, reading of wills and things like that, right? That could be part of the reason for some travel. Okay. Maybe you're going to like a funeral, right? Um, or you're going to like some reading of the, of a will or something like that. And this can really cause a lot of stress, right? And I mean, that's likely not for all of you, obviously. Okay. But it is certainly a possibility for some of you out there. Okay. And, um, you know, so if that's the case, keep your wits about you, right? Stay focused, right? Maybe you need to be a rock to that, you know, 
for someone else to lean on or maybe your person is the rock for you to lean on right in that energy because this is letting go sending someone into the light possibly okay and this is external in your environment okay so there could be some things that go wrong the hierophant is a very religious card as well okay so you may have already received some news about something here and now you got to go and deal with um some of the aftermath there are right not exactly the most bright and shiny um message but hey you could actually um get a little bit of relief right from that right because we are cleansing we are releasing and we are letting go okay oh dear there it is okay um so we have the ten of swords we do have the death card and we've got the ten of cups family card okay so yeah some of you are experiencing some grief some pain in this energy again external environment um and it is family with the typically family with the ten of cups Okay, but um, I feel like this is a cleansing and purging of energy as well. Okay, so some of you, yes, there is some sort of um, family uh, emergency or family thing that you're dealing with, okay, in that energy. But in a little bit lighter way, okay, with the Ten of Swords, right, there maybe has been some pain and some challenges, right, difficult decisions, okay, things have been feeling a little bit dark and dreary, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel in that Ten of Swords, okay, there's better times ahead, Okay, the death card does bring in change and transformation. It does bring in deaths and births and rebirths and that kind of thing as well. All right. Um, but the death card can certainly represent a transformative energy in your relationship. Now, I do feel that someone is going through some spiritual growth here too. So that could be you. And, you know, when we are go grow going through some spiritual growth or we are bonding um, spiritually with our person, right, there is a cleansing and purging that does go along with that. And we do need to cleanse out, right? And we do need to release some baggage and things like that so we can move forward in a brighter way, right? In a brighter, brighter direction, right? We can move off into that sunrise and see what sun is shining on the brand new day. So the death card does bring about changes and transformations um, in your world, some were within your control and some are not in your control, okay? But the death card here, Scorpio energy ruled by Pluto, okay? And Pluto does tend to shake things up a little bit and does bring things from the underworld, right? With the judgment card, so things come to the surface that you need to deal with. But thankfully, we do have the 10 of cups coming here and this is a happy home, happy family, happy ever after card, unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities. So this can be very much a cleansing and purging energy that's here for you and then the sun shines on you again, right? So there is happiness, there is joy, but sometimes, you know, we do need to kind of deal with some issues that we've got going on, okay? So that is an awesome omen, very happy card, okay? Maybe it's something as simple as your travel plans are changing or again, maybe there's some family challenges um, that you're dealing with and then they sort themselves out, right? And things change very much for the better. Your hopes and fears here. We've got the death card. Holy crap, it's second time. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, some of you, may, you might be afraid of, you know, maybe there has been like um, something in your family, maybe an illness or an accident or something like that. And maybe there is like some real world fears that are coming in here. They're external from your actual relationship. They affect your relationship too, right? So you might have some fear there around that. We can have fear of our relationship coming to an end, right? Um, or we can have a fear of change, okay? But I feel here, if for the most part, with this death card here, that um, I think that there is a little bit more hope than anything else. Okay, I hope things get better. I hope things can change for the better. I hope that, um, you know, that we can weather our storm and come out the other side. Because when we do get the death card, right, things are dark and dreary and then the light shines, right? So, you know, change and transformation are part of every relationship. And sometimes we do need to talk about things. Sometimes those things are difficult. And, but if we are embracing change and are willing to transform and are willing to do things a little bit differently or a little bit better, right, then we can very much come out the other side in this 10 of cups energy, right? A lot lighter, a lot brighter, and a lot happier than we were and feeling a more stability and security. Remember the 10 of cups is kind of like the happy ever after card a little bit. 
Okay, so, um, you know, embrace some change and transformation, okay? And remember, I said at the very beginning of your reading, I think I did anyway, that we do have some challenging energy coming in in July. We have some disruptive energy. We've got Venus going in retrograde, okay? So, yeah, this is where we rehash things, where we talk about things. Maybe some things come back up again and we can reevaluate things, but passions run deep and passions run hot, Okay, and that can be really great, but it can also represent some challenges there. But I think here that there is some good things unfolding for you, okay, but there is choices, right? There is things to talk about, things to get out in the open, not always easy. And we've got the Tower card coming out here as your overall outcome. So, wow, geez. Um, yeah, <laughs> so sometimes when we get the Tower, there can be an epiphany or a revelation that changes things, disrupts things disrupts our life, disrupts our world, um, and it feels it feels like our world is crumbling, okay, but it requires us to take a leap of faith. It requires us to get out of our comfort zone, okay? There's things that have been standing in your way blocking your progress that need to be addressed and dealt with and then let go of so that you can move forward and embrace the lighter way or embrace some new things coming in, okay? So the tower is really surprises, um, something unexpected, sometimes things that are very challenging to deal with, but the tower can also come in to release any kind of stagnation, stuck energy, um, release us from things that just aren't working, right? This is where we burn things away, right? And we, um, you know, um, are a lot lighter and brighter, but it's a little bit challenging, right, in that energy, and we do have some challenging energy for you. Um, uh, you know, but I think again that you come out the other side, um, lighter and brighter and more positive, but whenever we do get the tower, expect the unexpected. Okay. A sudden shift in energy, a sudden shift in expectations, a sudden shift in belief systems here as well, right? It doesn't have to be external. It doesn't have to be your whole world crumbling away. Okay. But sometimes it feels like that, right? Um, you know, so, but the tower ultimately gets us moving and shaking, gets us out of our comfort zone, gets us unstuck and requires us to take a leap of faith. All right. But sometimes you may get like an epiphany or a revelation or something like that, where it's like, okay, the time is now I got to take action. Right. And with the nine of wands crossing, there's something that's got to give. Um, here in this energy. Okay. So this can be when we get the tower, two death cards, um, two judgment cards, geez, um, this can expect the unexpected, right? So there's something that is shifting, something that is transforming within your relationship or in your external environment. Okay. Very important, right? It might not be you, but it can affect you and your relationships. So this could be something going on with family, right? And, you know, but you do have to deal with it in some way. You probably got people knocking at your door and phoning you and all that kind of stuff, right? So, but this can also propel you forward really, really fast, all right, in this energy. We've got the King of Pentacles, the Page of Wands, and we've got the Seven of Cups. I feel the Seven, the Fill the Tower card here um, in, this, in this instance will clear away any confusions or doubts or uncertainties that you may have. All right, because we do have the seven of cups, right? And seven of cups can be about imagining things, but we can imagine the best or we can imagine the worst, right? So I think here that something happens in your month ahead, okay, or even a little bit over probably into August, okay, with the tower that's really fast energy though. Um, it can really happen any minute and any time, right? So um, hold on to your hat really when we get the tower. Um, but if you're thinking the worst, the worst case scenario, nine of swords, nine of wands, right? Here you are. Um, I think the tower is going to help you to see the bright side of things, to help you see the good side of things and to help you see and realize how wonderful something can be. Okay, instead of wrapped up in fears and doubts and confusions. So with the seven of cups, this can be where we're fantasizing about things, both the good and the bad. Okay, um, our mind goes crazy, right? We also have options, right? But there's a fear of choosing though. Okay, I've got all these possibilities. I can do this, I can do this, we can go this way, we can go this way, right? And there is an element of fear there, right? Because what if I choose wrong? Especially if you have a life life-changing decision to make, in the month ahead, um, whatever it happens to be internally within your relationship or externally. If you have a life-changing decision to make, we sometimes can be afraid of that, right? Because what if I choose wrong? What if I, you know, do this thing or what if I make this choice and it, it ends up 
not working. It ends up blowing up in my face. And the thing is, when we get the seven of cups, follow your heart, listen to your intuition. Okay. You're already, you're already tapped in, tuned into your intuition. Okay. Um, make a balanced, fair, unbiased choice. Make sure you get all the information that you need. Okay. But don't overthink and overanalyze. We, and we ultimately need to listen to our heart because we can only make the choices today based on the information, the wisdom, the knowledge that we've acquired up until today. The future is for forever perpetually in motion, right? And we can't always predict the future. We can hope for the future. We can make some plans and hope that our plans work out the way that we want them to, right? But inevitably life throws us curveballs. So just use all of the information that you have right here, right now to make the wisest choice for you. But we have the page of wands and the king of pentacles. So I think this tower is actually bringing you in some very happy surprises. Okay, it may feel like things are changing, right? But which means that things are challenging because you're getting out of your comfort zone. Okay, but the king of pentacles, you can have something to do with money. Commitment, right? The king of pentacles is very successful energy and it does bring in stability and security and long-term commitment into your world. The page of wands delivers some excellent, excellent news. So some of you, right, your disruptive energy with the tower, you're moving to a new um, a new house, right? Someone's moving jobs. Um, maybe you're even moving to a new city, right? And the shake things up. The tower is there to shake things up, right? Not necessarily for the worse or for the better, okay? But it is shaking things up and that's sometimes hard to deal with. But with the king of pentacles, long-term commitment, money coming in, abundance, can come in there. The page of wands can deliver the new information about new jobs, um, new homes, anything that you're manifested into your life, anything that you've attracted into your life, right? It's very exciting. Okay. This can also represent traveling, traveling to somewhere, right? Because maybe there is something lost. Okay. But now there's a new way of living life. So it may require a little bit of travel there, but ultimately the page of wands can bring in a lovely energy, a lovely spring in your step. Okay, so if you've been feeling things are stagnant, then we're getting things back on track, right? This represents some growth in your relationship. Okay, um, but with the page, <laughs> gotta say, with the page being um, representing youth or children, okay, um, and with the tower coming in there and a lot of changes coming in, um, I feel here that there might be like something like a surprise pregnancy, or something like that and it's like whoa I wasn't prepared for this right but this could actually really um, move move your relationship forward or of course it's gonna change the dynamic of things there as well but with the page of wands you could get some really wonderful news okay and it can affect your home your money your commitment your relationship status okay and you could actually be making the very best choice for yourself Okay, um, and choosing wisely really does pay off for you. It can be a surprise engagement, maybe. Okay, or maybe <laughs> if you are planning that wedding, if you're that if you're that person, you might just be blowing the crap out of it all. You might be like, you know what? Forget this. Let's uh, page of wands. Let's do something impulsive. Let's go elope somewhere. Let's forget about all of this, all of this crazy energy, and let's just simplify things and let's just go off on your on our own and do our own thing, right? So you might be doing that. So you might have like a little bit of snap decision in there, okay? But it's probably, um, you know, might be the best if you've got um, a lot of, you know, really crazy uh, energies going on. It might just simplify things, okay? But I do feel here that there is some very positive energy coming in, but it does require change, transformation. It probably requires letting something go and dealing with a little bit of issues, okay? Getting things out in the open, all right? Um, but I feel like it probably be um, a good thing. So I think that by the end of the month and a little bit beyond, you probably get things back on track, but not without its challenges, whoa, and struggles along the way, okay? Family might be a really good resource for you, okay? Lean on your person. Okay, as well, and um, yeah, get it headed in the right direction. So, let's get your final messages here. There is one forgiveness. Hi, look at that. Well, considering you have two judgment cards coming in, okay, judgment card by the way is card number 20, so it's two and two. You also have the two of wands, and you have the high priestess, which is number two. So you have 2222. Go look up the deeper meaning of 2222. Okay, you'll get additional messages in there um, because there are four of them. 
decisions, 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 balance, harmony, getting all the information before you're making a balanced and fair choice. All right, but we do have forgiveness. Stop focusing your energy on past events for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. And your final message, there we are. Beware of what you're projecting for the qualities you admire in another are qualities you both possess. Equally so, the qualities you don't like are also your own reflection. Okay, so maybe you and your person again are at this crucial turning point in your relationship and you're coming to some deep realizations with those judgment cards there. Something about the qualities in your person mirroring the qualities in you. And remember, we do have the lover's card here with Gemini energy, duality. Okay, that's why we're soulmates. Okay, so I'm going to leave all that crazy energy there for you guys. Okay, um, I hope there was something here for you. Um, again, not always, not necessarily the easiest energy, but I do feel there's this big cleanse and purge of something that's maybe been just hovering over you or standing in your way or just some major um, family event or something that is impacting your relationship and your family. But anyways, if there was something here for you, if you enjoyed your reading, please do hit like on this video, subscribe to my channel as well. Um, I hope you guys do have a fantastic month. Okay. Um, ride the wave, expect the unexpected ground and center your energy and, um, remember to make those choices. Okay. So I thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.